So today, this is the start of a multi-stream craft. Oh. We are we are going big, people. Um, so today we are going to make an antique map, which was requested when Kim asked for suggestions the other week. Um, we're not going to make, there were suggestions of could we do a Lord of the Rings map or a Narnia map. We're going to do something different. I'm going to make an antique map of Bristol. What's which is Bristol? Bristol is the place I live. Oh yeah! Damn, I forgot what fictional land is that? Anyway. But Bristol Bristol used to be called Brightstow. Brightstow. Which I think is a wonderful name and sounds very fantastical. And Bristol has a lot of myth and kind of things things attached to it. So I thought we could make a fantastical map of Bristol and it will kind of give you an idea of maybe you can convert your hometown city into an antique map. Or so more, your D&D &D world, because I feel like we'd have a lot of crossover with the D&Ds, right? Um, so yeah, I like the idea that it it still is called Brightstow, but the Bristol accent, the Bristolian accent, is so thick that it's just come Let out. Let me say Bristol. 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 Yeah. Bristol. 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 You can see how it happened. Bristol. <laughs> and then the idea is that once we've done our map over the course of the next few streams, we are going to use that map to be the uh, front page of an antique spell book. Mm. Um, so we're going to make all, I'll, I'll show you how to make antique pages today and then I'll leave you to make lots of antique pages mm -hmm. in the course of the next two weeks before our next stream. And then we'll bind them together and we'll make a book cover and we'll put some electronics in the book cover oh. to make it kind of glow. And, oh, cool. Um, yeah, we'll have lots of fun. So this is something that you can make for yourself or you can make as a prop for D&D because &D, I know people, you know, love that. And yeah, today is all about crafting with tea. So it's your like your, your peak crafting. <laughs> this is peak crafting for me, but also like this is also this is complete uh, home craft. Like this is don't need any extra extra things. This is just you can do it at home. This is very much what have you got in the cupboard? Mm -hmm. Blah. Yeah. Um, so this is a pot of tea, <laughs> quite literally. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I almost wanted to t just be a bit of a troll there and be like, you know how normally you go like, here is some model clay. And I'm like, what brands do you use or what do you recommend? And I was just going to be like, what brands of tea do you recommend, Becky? This is Tetley. I drink Tetley. Okay. Um, but that's, you know. As long as it's black leaf tea. Like... Black leaf tea for your tea staining, your initial tea staining, or coffee. Someone said you can do coffee in the chat, and it's right, you can do coffee. I'm going to do a bit of painting with coffee later, but I I don't drink coffee, and the smell of it makes me feel a bit nauseous. Mm. Um, so I've done a tiny, small thing of coffee, and I'm a bit like... Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I use tea. Um, <laughs> tea's a bit thinner. It's, uh, coffee can sometimes leave um, streaks and kind of water residue, so... It's good for some things. They have different purposes. Um, I've got, uh, we've used, we've talked about this before. I've got lovely um, caddy paper. This is the handmade rag paper. Caddy, yes. Yeah, so was it K-H-A-D-I? Yeah. Which is Indian uh, handmade stuff. paper. So this is caddy paper. You could use just standard printer paper and I'll show you both of those and we'll look at, you know, different ways. You can paint with a paintbrush or you can just rub the tea bag on the paper. Um, you will get some streaks that way and if you rub the tea bag on the paper you will sometimes break the tea bag and end up with tea covering your um, paper which is less fun also if you're using loose leaf tea you can't really do that at all um, so the best way of doing this is filling up a tub that is bigger than your paper and putting your paper in the tub easy easy so this is tea this was stewing for about an hour you want to get a nice good colour on it um, and just kind of, it's cold now, by the way. Do not put your fingers into boiling hot tea. Also, I feel like boiling hot tea would destroy the paper. Um, it actually, sometimes, like, warm tea is, um, kind of softens the paper. Yeah. And with thick, if you're using thick handmade paper like this or card, that's actually quite helpful in a way because it mm. helps it soak in the tea. But boiling. No. <clears throat> Don't use boiling. Don't Straight put your hands out the or if you do boiling tea, use like pliers chopsticks. or uh, pliers, chopsticks, tongs. Um, yeah. So already, 
and I'm just like making sure this is completely saturated. Like you want the tea to soak into the paper completely. How much uh, milk and sugar do you add? <sighs> None. Do not add milk and sugar. <laughs> uh... Hey, Becky, do you microwave your tea water? <laughs> <laughs> Triggered! There it is! So I like to dip the edges, especially with like handmade paper like this, where you've got a really rough edge. That will soak up the tea a bit better because it's not kind of compressed so much. So I like to keep that in a bit longer just to kind of give that that fading around the edge. Um, if you've got normal paper, and I know people, I used to do this a lot when I was a kid, burn the edges. It looks so much, it's so much fun and it looks so pretty. Uh, be very careful. I do it over my bath if I'm burning paper because then it's easy Ooh, to drop yeah. it and cover it with water. Like that's, I would always do it somewhere where if it gets out of control, you can drop it and wet it. Um, we're just, just gonna do some normal paper. So normal paper is a lot thinner than handmade rag oh, paper. Ha yeah. <laughs> ha, so that's gone see-through almost immediately and it will start to tear. It's very easy to tear. Right. Um, so just be very careful with it, be very delicate. And the way I would put this to dry, you can hang it up like um, on a Line. hanging wire with pegs or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, but sometimes you'll leave like peg marks or clip marks or it will go through the paper if it's gone too, too soft like this. Get your craft towel. We all have one or, or your dye towel, you know, your scrap towel. Everyone's got a scrap towel. Um, put that on the floor and lay it on the towel. That's my mm. best way I would say for drying it. Um, and tea washes out, so you can put tea on a towel and it will wash out. Yeah. Um, like don't lay pages over the top of one another, they will stick. And, and tear. tear. There you go. So um, that's, I'm gonna call that scrap. <laughs> we got a question in chat, would iced tea work? I feel like it wouldn't because that's too sugary. And like, I feel like if you're buying store-bought iced tea, that's too thin yeah. and sugary and not really actually proper. Like if you're making iced tea, which is the act of like boiling up a black tea bag in the first place and, and then and then icing it. That would work because that's yeah. just iced tea. But if you're buying store-bought iced tea that's processed, I don't think that that would work. Like I feel that would be too sugary and thin and and then ants yeah, would come and eat your face. Or your book. <laughs> and your book, yeah. Yeah, I mean like this tea, so I would also just in comparison to my normal tea, I stew normal tea I mean, tea I'm drinking um, for about two minutes. This was stewed for an hour. Mm. So, and like constantly stirred, like, you know, the more you stir things, the more the tea bag air aerates. What's a watery term for aerates? <laughs> uh, stews, brews, leeches. Stews, yeah, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I'm gonna now do the wonderful Blue Peter thing. Here's one I prepared earlier. Hey. Um, so as you can see, I'm using A3 sheets of paper, which means that my book will be about, uh, will be an A4 size when I folded these in half. That's so, a big book then, A4. Yeah. I, I really like, like, I think spell books and things like, they, they feel big and chunky. I like yeah. them if they feel big and chunky. It depends how many pages you want to do. Like the advantage with this paper is it's really thick. This is, um, so someone who's good on paper, what's the standard GSM of a like printer paper, home paper that you no would idea. use? No idea. Somewhere between like 80 and 120, depending on the quality, sometimes down to 60 if you've got like cheap printer paper. Mm -hmm. um, this is 640 GSM. <laughs> Um, yeah. So a couple of sheets of this make a really thick book. Yeah. Like I made, uh, so I'll get it at the end of the stream, the craft book that I made for my project last year has, I think six sheets of this in it. Yeah. And it is, it is like five centimeters tall. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. So this is great for not having to use loads of sheets of paper um, and um, still making a thick, chunky, heavy book because spell books should be heavy. Like you should drop them on the table and they should go boom. You should be able um, to kill a fool with it. <laughs> Smack <yes>. them <laughs> um, Anyway, that's my piece of it. <laughs> I got this lovely line. So this I did in a baking tray. That's how I kind of stained this in a big, 
dish mm -hmm. um but it's huge so i sort of had to do like a half piece and then do the other half and then kind of gently like roll the tea across the uh, page yeah um what i ended up with was this line but i kind of love it it looks really nice and organic yeah um so yeah this is uh this is this is my piece of paper that i'm gonna be uh Gonna be drawing a map on now. I've got to actually draw a map. Now my yeah. brain's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what I was doing. What was I doing? <laughs> um, just another good tip. Um, do another little piece of paper that is your scrap test paper. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see I've done a bit of pre testing here on the back uh, while I was working out how I was gonna do this stream. Mm -hmm. um, so that you can test out your colours and things before you put them on your beautifully nice stained piece of paper. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I've got all sorts of materials here. I'm just going to put this aside while we do some tests. Yeah. I have coffee. <laughs> the advantage of painting with coffee is that coffee is a lot thicker than tea. And if you want it to be darker, if you're making instant, instant is great for this. If you're making instant, you can just add more coffee granules if you want it to be darker. Yeah. That's quite hard to do with tea. Like you sort of, once it's gone cold, you kind of need to re-brew it and add another tea bag. And like, once it's kind of cold, your tea bag's kind of done stewing. Yeah. Like that's not getting any further. So coffee is like a wonderful uh, medium, but I'm just going to show you on the back here. So this is my bit of coffee. Mm -hmm. which as you can see you get kind of edges to it yeah um which you don't with um with these are all tea so you don't get that so much with tea you do get it with coffee i mean you get it sort of if you use it thickly and leave it to dry on the page so if you kind of spread it out and actually kind of paint with it you'll get a nice wash coffee does look great it's really yeah. annoying <laughs> <laughs> um if you kind of leave it in this sort of dollop, you'll get this kind of outline where the water stops. And that's really interesting on old maps for creating like uh, landmarks and things. Yeah. Because you could just sort of plot them out and you'll get a kind of natural line to the edge of them. Okay. Um, the difference with painting with, you know, these materials as opposed to like paints, it's, it's kind of similar to watercolors, but because there's no pigment at the base of this, like these are essentially washes. They already exist as washes yeah um so you can't you know work into the pigment and then apply more pigment onto the page to make it darker so the only way to make it darker is to leave it to dry and then apply another wash on top right so there's a bit of like you know learning to paint with this and um one thing i'd recommend i've got my uh water pot over here but if you've got a wet brush and then you dip it in it won't pick up as much of the material okay so clean off your brush and then dry it off a bit before you go into a next thing okay makes sense everyone yeah okay we have some teas here these are just you teas from my collection so many teas oh my god um, so this is a Russian caravan tea which is a black tea oh. that's really smoky and comes out um, <sighs> A bit darker than kind of uh you know standard black tea so i, I thought that would be quite caravan. interesting to tea I russian caravan it. is great yeah. and i'm slightly sad that i've got two yeah. tea bags in there and i'm like that's two cups of yeah. tea i've wasted <laughs> um so this is going to create quite a uh it's a subtle brown but it's just giving like a really nice gentle background wash is that even visible that far away? It's, an, it's not, yeah, it's quite pale. It is quite pale. Like I've got, I've also got a teapot over here um, that I'm just gonna try. Oh, let's uh, let's dry off our brush. I've literally just not just done the while. thing that I've told. <laughs> so this is just, this is Tetley that I'm just doing in these lines here. It's slightly darker, but this was stewed for a lot longer. So. Like this is three tea bags stewing for two hours that's giving those lines. So you can see the difference between like coffee and tea. Tea is subtle, coffee is not. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, yeah. Already my brain is going, oh, the coffee is better. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so two other teas. This is raspberry and echinacea. 
which mm -hmm. I just thought I'd try because it was the only kind of pink coloured tea I had. Um, subtle, mm -hmm. but nice. Um, like part of the thing to remember is that antique maps, I don't have a setup that means I can easily move my camera, but if I did, I'd show you my wall oh, over there, yeah. which has a giant poster of the Lord of the Rings Middle Earth map. Mm -hmm. um, and like the color shifts in, um, in antique maps are quite subtle like off or, or they're ridiculously over the top which is not really the look i'm going for <laughs> so you can start with the subtle colors and then kind of build them up but yeah i i didn't get much out of the red there i do have an alternate kind of red color that i will show you in a second um this green this is nettle tea and i think this is actually going to dry a bit of a weird color so this is a complete experiment okay um so we're just gonna yeah, it looks great. I was gonna ask, like, it, is there any point in using green and white teas? Like, yeah, I just um, green tea. Apparently, if you stew it quite thickly, you can get some proper sort of greens and um, kind of like really subtle kind of greeny browny colours out of it. Okay. There are good artists, for forests. Good for forests. Like, have a look online. There are artists who paint entirely in tea and coffee, and some of them are incredible. And uh, they've really turned this into an art form. So. You know, I'm still I'm I I've painted with black tea and coffee before, but other color teas are new to me, so I probably haven't stewed these enough. Also, I did only put one tea bag in each of these, and I probably should have put two, but I'm running out of these teas, and as we're in lockdown, I can't get any more. So I was being a bit stingy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that green is very subtle. Like probably to try and get that into anything yeah. real, I'd have to uh, stew that with a lot more lot more tea bags and um yeah maybe try and match a tea so i think we're going to stick with coffee and black tea for today yeah. so what was the but where get... is the raspberry tea on that <laughs> it's there that, it just looks like that, you, that it's kind just of... damp it just looks damp <laughs> yeah um i mean there's also something in that things do dry differently yeah. so like this is actually this kind of bluey purple i think Sorry, i can't see because it's blown out on the camera oh, um yeah it's that. just the I'll yeah just there you go there you go it's right there that is, I think that's the raspberry tree, raspberry tea okay, dried. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and that's like the, so it dries. You know, it's worth waiting for it to dry and seeing what happens. This is why I mean, like, have that test piece yeah. because I think um, it's really important. But we're just gonna just gonna show you something else. This is another pot, but this. Oh, you want a red? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Virgin's blood. Virgin's blood would be thicker. I'd say something like black uh, beetroot. Is it beetroot or something? No, but I'd really love to try beetroot. Yeah. Um, that sounds intriguing. Anyone in chat care to is weigh it, in? What is it a tea? No. Cranberry juice. It, oh, hibiscus. Hibiscus tea would probably work hibiscus great. Hibiscus tea is a load of bollocks, bush. but sure. <laughs> Hibiscus and rooibos, you can get a combination tea and it's lovely and it really is like red. But hibiscus hey! tea is bollocks though. Anyway. Um, uh, Pup Snap Gaming. It is wine! Oh, you fine. are correct. It what? is a bottle of red wine um, that has... You know, I bought a bottle of red wine to drink with my friends on a Zoom chat and then I drink, I drank a couple of glasses of it and then I realised that it's summer and I didn't really want to drink red wine anymore and it sat on the uh, side and went a bit off and so now it's cooking wine. Yeah, fair. <laughs> or painting. painting wine. Painting wine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just some, you know, experiments in different tea colours and what they can do. See, yeah, now that's, um, that... Uh, raspberry is drying and it's actually a blue colour. Okay. It's really interesting. So good for like, water bodies. Good for bodies of water. Yeah, but all of these, like, they just give subtle edge. And, like, if you're doing an antique map, what I'd say is do subtle colours and then outline, like, your details. But all the colours should not be, like, unless you're going for... There used to be some quite cartoony maps that were antique maps. And you could be going for one of those. Um, so just, you know, use your materials based on the style of map you want to create. So here I did a rough kind of drawing of what my Brightstone map is going to look like. Uh, is that the, we are the right way up today. Yeah, um, I flipped yeah. it. I flipped the camera. <laughs> now that we discover that we can flip cameras, Becky. 
took us what? 11 weeks? Three months. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so this is my rough map. What's uh, One of the things I love about this, I looked up a map of ancient Bristol and there was a wall. Bristol had a city wall. Oh. Which I've just called the wall in true, uh, true um, Game of Thrones style fashion. Um, we also had a castle. We've got a very important bridge that I've completely failed to draw correctly here because that is not a suspension bridge. So I, I need to, well, am I going to draw this out or am I just going to begin madly painting? <laughs> I might just begin madly painting. Yeah. What would you um, recommend for the casual viewer who... Um, I definitely to... recommend doing this. I definitely recommend like making a kind of template mm -hmm. off your sheet that you can kind of work from. Um, whether you want to kind of draw it onto your page or not is sort of up to you. Um, and I mean, I'll end up drawing it anyway i'll just end up drawing it on top but i think what would be nice would first be to put in kind of some of the landmarks and things with just a bit of color and the nice thing is if you're painting with tea it's really subtle you can just sort of get the lines in and if they look terrible it sort of no one will notice it will just look like the background if you then go over it with um does that make sense yeah could you hold the draft map up to the camera just so we can see like the detail oh there we go nice okay um pull it down a little bit just so we can see the top no as in like d there we go there you go right <laughs> okay fair just kind of seeing just how rough it is like just how yeah like this is really just like where i'm putting stuff what needs to go in it blah 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 blah, blah. um so yeah, I'm going to start with a big soft brush and some tea, my kind of thick tea. Um, and I'm just going to start painting. I'm wondering, anyone want to weigh in on this, whether I should put like a border around my map? Because I sometimes think that looks really nice. Yeah. So um, if other people were to sketch onto the paper like people who are maybe a bit less certain like me a bit less certain about their artistry and the ability to paint would you just recommend like light pencil um yeah i just very very gentle i mean that's so light you probably can't see it on camera i can't see that unless i put it there yeah um, okay yeah, so very, very light pencil, something that's not going to show through uh, if you kind of, um, when you kind of cover it Paint with tea. It, and yeah. Because if you start rubbing out, like what a rubber actually does is it kind of takes very thin layers off both the rubber and the paper surface. Mm -hmm. Like if you've ever rubbed too hard on yeah, paper, you'll yeah. know you lose a top layer of paper. Um, so rubbing out, you'll start losing some of the tea stain. Yeah. So basically you want to avoid rubbing out is is what you're trying to do here Tiny um, I didn't say rubbing one out i said rubbing out honestly everyone's uh hella hot for a border Every everyone wants a border all right let's do a border um so i'm gonna eyeball this because that is how i work a kick in says if you use a higher h number pencil it'll give a lighter line so uh blah 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 don't use B number pencils as that's really dark and soft and smudgy. Yeah. Um, so I use, this is a bit of a plug, but we're not sponsored by them again. Um, we have no sponsors. These are my favorite, these are my favorite pencils. Um, I love these pencils. What are they for people who can't read tiny writing on a camera? <laughs> they are Faber-Castell uh, Grip Plus uh, uh, 0 0.7, which is the size, but they're basically, it's a mechanical pencil but it's got a thick grip and it feels like holding a pen. <laughs> Don't laugh at thick grip. <laughs> Honestly. How does it feel in your <sighs> hand, Becky? <laughs> you deserve that. You I did deserve, deserve that. that. <laughs> um, also, the great thing about this is that most mechanical pencils come with a rubber, but most mechanical pencils come with like a tiny rubber that you can't do a lot with. Mm, this... Mm, mm. Oh, it's a big oh. boy. It's an extendable rubber. And when you buy these, they come with a spare rubber, which means 
or spare eraser if you're American. I know rubber can mean something different in different parts of the world. It's just the way you're waggling it around and being excited about this thing coming out of the thing that's sorry, that, and you're just like, I can't, I can't with you, Becky. I can't. <laughs> Let's draw a border. Bo border time. Border time. Oh, I can smell the coffee. It's so unpleasant. I'm I not. Am... It I'm I'm kind of low key still mad at High Rollers because um, a couple of years ago when we started Aroas, um, Mark decided that he needed a big sheet of like uh, dyed paper to make a map on. Yep, and, very important. <laughs> um, and, well, actually no, it was Trot. Trot wanted it because he wanted to try and make the intro to High Rollers. So you know when uh, anyone who watches uh, High yeah. Rollers, when we start the title screen with the Dun Duns. He originally wanted um, a real life piece of coffee dyed paper like we've got here so that he could roll a, 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 a camera shot over it so he could get that rolling kind of map dun dun thing. So I went <laughs> dun -duns. and I... Sorry about my head there, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I went and I, uh, I used my last bag of Malaysian copy or copy because he was, he was like, this is urgent as well. We need to get this done because we're starting on this day. So we need to get this done. Blah, 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 blah. And so I used my last bag of Malaysian copy ore. And then he said, oh, no, I, f I figured out how to do it digitally. Oh. So I was, that is I was, I'm still salty about it. That's two years ago and I'm still salty about it. Um... And yeah, it, it then became like the map that we used in High Rollers, like um, the one that Quill is meant to fill out, but doesn't anymore. So it was used like, you know, for four episodes and uh, that was... I've just drawn a kind of uh, one centimeter line all the way around the edge of my um, map. Yes. Which will become my border at a later date. Um, but it just gives me my space within that to work. I don't know what I'll do with the border. I could put like a, I could put like a map symbol, like a scale yeah. symbol. Uh, the Lord of the Rings one has Elvish written all the way around it. That yeah. might be, um, but something like that. Filigree. Um, Filig filigree. But I'm just filigree. 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 You know, fancy curls um, and stuff. Ornamentation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the way, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to show you what I mean by just kind of painting this um, without kind of drawing the details and how forgiving this is going to be. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start with my tea because as we've said, the coffee is quite strong and, that, you know, that's nice, but it will leave very solid marks on this. And the first thing here is we've got uh, the C up here. So if you look at how like watery that's going on, it's basically just creating shade right now. So if you decided that this was wrong, you could very easily kind of ignore it. Mm. So like, you know, I know for some people will want to draw things on to start with, but this is really forgiving. And also if you're making a fantasy map, you can wing it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know if you've ever seen. Um, there was a video that went around last year of someone. Um, was it a video creating a map for D and D using mm. actual physical dice? So they they kind of uh, they had a system for it. You're gonna have to Google it to look it up. But they basically put a whole bunch of dice in a pot, and a certain amount of dice meant like forest, and a certain amount of dice meant mm. uh, mountains, and a certain amount of dice meant this kind of geographical feature. And then they just threw it onto a big sheet of paper. And then just me uh, pencil outlined where the kind of clumps of dice landed, um, oh, that, that and then decided that. what the feature that was depending on how they'd assigned like the kind of dice beforehand. Um, and it was really interesting. I, I was cynical at first because I was like, hmm. But then I actually saw the finished map when they'd um, finished like drawing it in and filling it out. And actually, yeah, it looked really, really good. Um, so, I yeah. mean, because here's part of the thing, right? Like human beings, we're not random. We kind of think we're random. Um, but our brains don't, we actually, we try and find patterns and structure and things. So when you're kind of going, oh, I want to make a map and I want it to be random, like our brains don't work that way. Our brains, and we do things like if we put trees over here, we'll go, oh, I don't want to put trees right next to yeah. that because that will look too unbalanced. I'll put the trees over here. Yeah. So we create patterns. Unnatural. So actually, yeah. Yeah. So actually we try and put an order on the world. Um, so actually us trying to do something that's completely kind of, 
imaginary and random is really hard. Um, so actually the dice throw is a really clever way of kind of doing it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, you'll have to Google it for the exact, like how he kind of um, set the parameters for it. Um, but it was it was really, really interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, so we just had a question in chat. Uh, the paper is Cardi paper, spelled K-H-A-D-I paper. Um, and I don't know if that's the ta the overall term for the paper, if that's the company that makes this one. That's the company that makes this one. Yeah. Um, okay. But I think, like, is Cardi, if someone can weigh in if this is right, that Cardi is a region in India? Yeah, so I think that's where they make it, because the, the company... Yeah, cause it's all, it's, uh, the company's in England, but it's all handmade in England. Um, like, and they're a good ethical company. They look after their staff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of so. I think Cardia's part is the region. How about we take a look at some of your creations in chat? So, Ace of Thorns has been working on this for a while now. Uh, Ace of Thorns, this is actually pretty crazy. Has made, if you can see that, um, it coming up on the stream. Ace of Thorns made this amazing little couch. Like, so he actually made like the woodwork oh, and the wow. upholstery. So there's a little doll back there. So you can see like for scale, um, that's not a life size couch. That's a doll, <laughs> uh, a doll sized couch. Uh, chaise longue. Is that a chaise it's longue? Uh, I'd call that an antique fainting couch. And a faint, oh, I feel faint. Get me my laudanum. Um, so yes, that's, that's, that's exactly amazing. That. So that's what Ace of Thorns has been working on. Um, that is wonderful. We also have, so during this stream, um, Nixion has been making their own guitar from scratch. Wow. Look at that. I'm just going to make wow. that big. I'm going to make that super big. Yeah. So I'm guessing that... you've cut that body yourself and, and started uh, varnishing and waxing it yourself. That is pretty insane. What have you done there on that river? What have, are you using coffee? I've forgotten what we're doing. <laughs> We've gone off on a on a tangent. Yeah. Um. So I just used coffee to kind of create this edge around the river. Yeah. Just kind of define it. So the way I did that was just kind of, um, just to kind of paint coffee. I just highlighted the bottom edge really, and I just kind of painted coffee along the edge, and then used a bit of water to kind of pull the top, blend the top out, and mm -hmm. that's just leaving a really kind of nice line on the bottom. Okay. Um, but blending into, and I'm just now I'm defining my border a bit with some red wine. Oh, darling. Because <laughs> uh, you know why not? I think that's definitely a definitely a way to go. So yeah. I can't even remember the last time I drank red wine. <sighs> okay, this is Lizip's project. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking. It is. <gasps> an acrylic <laughs> wow. knife called the acid stabber no that's terrible <laughs> that is oh that's a thing of it's a glowy beauty. knife is that is that lights is that yeah. like glow up glow paint like how have you done that tell us the things <laughs> it makes me think of like in D D when you get like when you cut someone and you get like acid damage like you know that's what acid yeah. damage would look like that's really cool uh, so oh my god it's big uh this is clarissa's witch house made out of cardboard uh oh, recycled wow. cardboard houses and this is yeah her witch house Oh, that's beautiful. That looks amazing. I love it. Oh, wow. I really want to play with cardboard more. I love yeah. that you I love that you've done the roof tile. Yeah. Oh. I love the lopsided ramshackle look. Like that's amazing. It kind of almost reminds me of Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, it's got a very sort of Howl's Howl's vibe. Please, yeah, please tweet me these things as well, not just Kim so that I can I can talk to you all about Gosh. them. Gosh. Because... This is from RNL. Uh, which they've made to put in front of their station at work, and it's a cross stitch of no speaking before coffee. Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. That's good. Really good lettering as well. Yeah, like yeah. Cross stitch can look a bit ropey, but that's beautiful. I really like cross stitch. My mum used to do it a lot, and I remember as a kid, I used to really enjoy it. Because to my like weird logical brain, it just makes sense. And yeah, here we go. So this is from Steph, and it's a mask. So, 
I'm currently watching today's live stream and I thought I would share my Dragonborn mask, which I made for my Halloween D&D session where I dressed up as my own character, Storm, who's a blue Dragonborn Storm Herald barbarian. Beautiful. So yeah, a little dragon uh, dragon mask for you there. Um, that looks amazing. I love it. I, I, I like how you've done the, the wool hair. Um, yeah. Oh, that's really fun. See, Becky's just like entranced. Becky's like... Oh. Yeah, was I meant to be doing something? Because... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh, Akikins is going to save up their cool stuff to tweet at Becky <laughs> later. I didn't just spill red wine all over my... Uh... Oh, what geographical feature is that? I don't know, but it'll be something. Again, rags. Always have rags on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that can become something like... I'm not bothered about that. That looks great. That's kind of fun. Um, we'll make that into something at some point. Charles Riley just goes, The tree is bleeding. The uh, tree is blood. Real Dinos Game says, The pool of blood. Uh, Akikin says, It's a nice embankment on the river. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. It's the... <laughs> so we have from Serenity Solstick. Sorry, I was trying not to sneeze into my microphone there. Is uh, halfway through making this amazing. It looks like embroidery to me, not cross stitch. Um, but Pokemon embroidery. It look that looks like an embroidery stitch to me, right? Oh wow! No, yeah. is that still stitch because it's like the grid. Um... But it's not a cross stitch. It's like a embroidery stitch. But no, it's still they're still going in crosses because they've got the grid backing, whereas Why? embroidery, I think, just um. very tight cross stitch. Is it? I don't know. I don't know the definitions, but that looks beautiful, and I'm so excited to see it finish. So that is Serenity Solstice's uh, Pokemon team. Just on uh, fantasy crafts, fantasy maps, and making mistakes. So I just tried to draw my bridge across here, and I've realised that I've got these river angles. Like this bit really needs to be out here to draw a bridge across them nicely. So I'm going to connect the bridge in a different place. But this is a fantasy map of Bristol, so it's fine. <laughs> right. What are you drawing? Uh, yeah. Can you hold it up? What are you? So what is that? Yeah. What's that? So that's that's the wall. Okay. This is oh, the Bristol wall City that Bristol used, used to have. To have. The wall. Okay. To um, so keep the Bartholians so, uh, out. Fuck off, Bath. I oh, don't want any Bath. Um, but it also had a major road cut through that led to the Bristol Bridge, which was the important kind of trade that allowed you to get across the Avon. Um, did you just fully swear at Bath? Yeah, <laughs> fuck them. Just pricks. <laughs> um, so yeah, for more, like, the organic things I've hand-painted without drawing in, things like buildings I would probably draw in first because my brain, I don't think, could handle just painting them randomly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this now with my colours, and then we're going to go in and outline it. So this will be our, like, demonstration of how to do all that. Cool. Um... Let's talk about uh, lettering while I'm painting. Okay. So if you can see on this, there's a lot of like names of places. Yeah. And awesome old maps have awesome old lettering. I'm terrible at doing lettering, winging lettering. Kim mm. could probably do this because she does calligraphy, but I yeah, can't boy. like, if I try and write that just on this, it will look like block capitals in my handwriting. So nifty little trick. Um, is print out all your names in nice lettering um, and then you can either do the thing where you write over them in tracing paper and then you do the trace verse and transfer thing but a really good way of doing it is just to write uh, like print them backwards um, write them in uh, write over them in gel pen and then press them down on your page and the gel because it stays wet will transfer and then you can just go over that with pen That makes sense to everyone? I'll post some pictures when I'm doing it to kind of demonstrate because I feel like that was a bit of a... What's looser. the name of it? Bright Stow? Bright Stow. So Bright and then S-T-O-W. E. S-T-O-W-D. Uh, S-T-O-W-E. Oh. That was... Why was that so hard? Well, here's some <laughs> basic bitch calligraphy for you. Actually, that's really basic. That's basic as hell. So I'm, I'm just pulling out... I want to do the the tops of these towers on the wall. I want to do them bright red. Okay. Um, so I'm resorting to watercolor. Um, and the nice thing about watercolors is, you know, they'll still 
have the same kind of quality as the tea because they're water look i really am redeeming watercolors now aren't i <laughs> Um, because they're water-based, like they won't look out of place against the watercolours, um, and they'll still spread in the same way. So that will work quite nice. Okay. And you could really kind of, you could really work these into the kind of the tea stain and do them really subtly. But I kind of think I want a bit to kind of offset the border, just a bit of kind of fun red. And are you going to wash these out later, or is that kind of like the final redness, if you get what I mean? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> See as we go. This is very like, you know, like watercolours. People who use watercolours a lot will know they're quite forgiving, and you can kind of go back in. You know, if I decided that was too dark there, I could kind of take my water and just sponge it on and then bring off a bit of the pigment like that. Um, or I could go over them again with more tea and just kind of blend them into the background a bit more. Like there's a lot of um, leeway with this kind of style yeah. of painting. Uh, we're all about forgiveness. Forgiveness of, you know, <laughs> messing up and mistakes. Very important tip here. Do not try and outline it while things are still wet. Okay. Why um, is that, Becky? I don't know why, but just, you know. <laughs> Because they will, you will get like bleeding. Your pens will bleed. Uh, <laughs> that sounds horrific. <laughs> Just gonna create an example here. So here's some wet coffee on our little test piece. Um, if we now take a, well, if we take a watercolor brush pen, then it will turn into watercolor and disappear. So that's not useful. Um, <laughs> if we take a normal pen, and this is my waterproof pen. So this is my um, Coptic marker that I showed you guys the other week. And yes. it does work if it goes on something dry and then you go over it wet. Like that will now stay, I hope, if this goes wrong. Yeah, that doesn't, that does bleed. It doesn't blur. I'll bring this up to the camera closer in a minute. Um, if you do it over wet, it, 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 I mean, that's completely disappeared. I might have ruined a pen now. That's uh, That's gone really well. Come back to that. So yes, it will just disappear and blur and smudge and be horrible and unpleasant. And nice. that's right with that one. Yeah, that goes very, very smudgy. Yeah, blobby. Yeah, so wait for stuff to dry before trying to outline. Twitter. So um, just uh, while yeah, Kim's on. showing things, I'm just going to outline my wall so we can have a look at some nice out outlining walls. So from extraterrestrial, we have, right, oh God, it's big. We have this parrot boy. Um, so this is a parrot <gasps> macaw that I made out of cardboard. Love it. Look at his little face. Ah. So I've been outlining my uh, wall and my castle here with brown, and I'm not sure I like it. Shall I outline in black instead? What do we think? One for brown at the moment. Just shade one side. Mix. Okay, let's. I like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, extraterrestrial being says the claws are made of bent wire wrapped in black embroidery thread. Right. Akikins in chat has made this. And the tweet says to me, I sort of finished this last night. I bought the tiny astronaut off of eBay and painted it. This is the paper mache I was working on the other week. It's <gasps> lit with one micro LED and fiber optics for the stars. Color comes from tissue paper and black paint. So wow. is this like a flat light that you've made and you've put like a little model of an astronaut in it? Is that- Do you have that... like- Ah, okay. In... Akikin says in chat, sorry, it's a tin that a watch came in, so it has a tiny window. And it's a little space scene that has a hemisphere of paper mache. Oh, so it's a cur curved oh, surface no. in the tin. Wow, that is cool as balls. That's amazing, Akikins. I love that. I love that. That is so cool. That is cool as hell. I oh, mean, crap. I think what we're also showing here for... Um, uh... Blah, 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 blah. uh I think what we're showing here with the range of things that people are putting out is um, 
inspiration can come from anywhere and you can make anything as well inspiration earlier like people are making all sorts of things yeah deep, like cool everything this is this is a watch tin and it's now a space scene yeah. that's incredible With like LEDs and a tiny can... astronaut amazing like inspiration can come from anywhere and your brain can just go oh, i want to make that or oh i see that yeah. or uh, I, I've kept with the brown for the moment because I can always go back in and outline it black later. And I think actually once this gets more busy, like the black might be too much. And I do want to define like the edges maybe in black and then just keep this subtle. So I have just kept going with the brown for the moment, everyone. I know there was a debate, but it at least means I've got somewhere to go. Whereas yeah. if I do the black and I decide I don't like it, I can't go back this yeah. way. I can go... Once I've got the whole thing, I can maybe go, mm, it looks a little, a lot black. Um, yeah, so I'm just still, still just outlining. I'm going to do this wall and some trees to kind of demonstrate. But, oh, look at how those tree, tree blobs are drying yeah. with the outer edge. That's really nice. I really like that. Yeah. So this is a work in progress. This is Lord Wolfie's book nook for the, it's a work in progress. So it's, it's still happening. Um, I reckon that's something we could we could do. Oh, yeah, we point. could do a book nook. Someone sent me. Nook. So these have just become like huge. Yeah. Um, so also, I love both the books on either side of your book nook. Mm. So this is based on Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. Is that where it comes from? What do you mean? Oh, no, that's so what's the design of the this book particular nook. book nook. I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Brain. Yeah. Brain. Um, ah, because so, you can see it's nice. a tiny graveyard. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, these have started coming up like everywhere. Someone sent me one the other day that's a little library and it lights up at night and the book pages flip flip over. And it's just incredible. Like, I, 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 I have no idea how you do this. Like, <laughs> um, I'm sort of in awe of book nooks. Adud95 on Twitter. And so this is some paintings that they've done. And they're amazing. Like, holy crap. Oh, wow. I really like the four seasons. That's yeah, lovely. I like the one. In fact, I like mm, I like the black and white one, and I like the, the black one, and white one very next cool. to. I can't point because I'm I'm kinding behind. <laughs> behind. Uh, Describe it. Use your words. The one on the left. There you go. The 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 one with <clears> the sun. Yeah. Uh, so we've got these little. Oh, they look so good, and I want to eat them. I think they're made by Mary Lou. Uh, tiny fridge magnets oh. made from craft, craft foam and lacquered over. Wow. I want to eat them. I do want to eat them. They look so shiny and pretty and soft. Ah, Mary Louise okay. in chat. I like the Those 20 lovely, pence for, uh, for scale. That Those is so, are tiny. Yeah, talking about tiny things, like that is like the detail you've got on them are amazing. Like so I was just going to show off what uh, what I've done here, um, which I'm actually quite happy with. That now. looks amazing. The shading on it. See, I know you're talking about like, oh, I don't like doing detail that's tiny, blah, blah, blah. But um, that looks really good. Like you've done, <laughs> like it looks insane. <laughs> um. So yeah, I've just like, I've done a bit of shading with my watercolors. Um. I've also just put in some kind of tile and brick detail. Um, just, I I just think it adds a little something. And this is the kind of funny thing about uh, like antique maps. It's you sort of have to train your brain in a weird way because you're basically making a bird's eye view, but then you're looking at it straight on and it's 3D. It's a really weird thing in antique maps. It's kind of so funny to kind of look at it and see that they use both perspectives. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, that's my kind of my outer, outer wall of Bristol there and some trees. Nice. I love it. I love the little trees. Like that's really come together like from a splodge to like, yeah. It, yeah. it looked like, it looked like that. And now it looks like that. Yeah. That's so cool. And that's just like, that's that way of doing trees is directly taken off the Lord of the Rings map on my, my wall. Just these little kind of cauliflower yeah. florets and then these little little stubs for trunks. And I think that, that really, you know, it elevates it a lot. And I think actually I'm really glad I stuck with brown because I think actually the black, if I was trying to do detailing with that might get, uh, shading with that might get overwhelming. The yeah. brown just, it actually looks really nice now. More of it's done. Yeah. I like Astralt says, uh, tiny wizard hats for every tower. <laughs> 
I'm going to say, honestly, I'm not going to finish this map in the next 25 minutes. Yeah, I'm feeling that. <laughs> I wanted to talk a bit about like uh, what you need to prep for next week, uh, for two weeks time for making uh, books. So you'll need as many pages as you book all tea stained if you want them all tea stained i mean maybe you want to white maybe you don't want to have that kind of antique look the whole way through your book and if you want to use your book for writing in you can write on tea stained paper right no problem but you might want to have like um flat white pages it's entirely up to you you don't need to tea st it's stain book. anything it's you your have it's your book. book um you'll want to have as many pages as you want and you want them off. so they're uh are they called chapters i can't remember there's there are technical terms for book binding i'm gonna have to relook up for next time because i haven't um uh i haven't book bounded in a book bound in a while um so like you know uh you put a couple of pages together and <sighs> i'm gonna start that you're again. right <laughs> i just went down a kind of you know when you start spiraling in your head and you're like, I don't think your brain went a just, bit. Yeah. Just gonna keep going and it'll be fine. Um <sighs> So you want your pages and you want them folded. And then if you want to um make your book thick, you'll have like certain numbers of pages folded together. So like you might have four pages and you'll fold and you slot them all inside each one, and that's called a signature. Is when you've got a stack of folded sheets together, individual signatures. And then you want multiple signatures to bind together okay got the words back but basically you want as many pages as you want your book ready and prepped and folded in half however mm. if you're stuck with really small pages like maybe you're at home and you haven't got you really want to make a big book and you've only got a small paper um so let's just use a pair of scissors just demonstrate <laughs> i'm just bringing some i'm bringing I'm bringing in oh, i'm bringing in images lot. so don't worry about it um, like, let's say you've only got tiny pieces of paper. I'm just going to put this map off to the side now so you can see this. So we've only got tiny pieces of paper and we we'll to make a book. You know, maybe you want to make a new and you, you need bigger, bigger paper than you've got. Did you say notebook um, there? It cut off again a little bit. Uh, just a big book. I think I was saying if you want to make a giant book. Okay. And you... Um... So you want to make your book that big and you don't want to fold them in half. Then get your two sheets of paper, get some tape. This tape will be visible. So... Washi tape. This is where washi tape, you know, some people make some beautiful handbound books, washi tape. Um, but get some tape or you could use fabric if you've got fabric and use strips of fabric. Um, and you just want to tape your two pieces of paper together with a slight gap between them so that's not a very even gap but make an even gap so there's a bit of space so the tape is basically providing that that in inside seam um, and you'll want to tape on both sides so that neither side is sticky anymore yeah. so. oh. don't worry don't worry about it okay Ignoring Kim. So just cut the ends off there. I've done that really poorly. He chose poorly. poorly. Um, but basically what you'll end up is two pieces of paper tape and then fold along the tape and you'll sew to bind through the tape rather than through the paper. And you'll end up with this little kind of border on each of your pages that is your tape. So you can do some really nice effects with different um, style coloured tape or washi tape with that. Um, so you might want to do that anyway if you want yeah. something pretty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you'll need to prep all your pages, however many you want, so probably a stack. Um, if you're using really thick paper like I've got or card, then actually a signature might only be one sheet of paper. Um, so it might be that you're sewing into each sheet of paper just because if you try and put two of these together, it, it's so thick. It's so <laughs> thick. Um, I'll go and I'll grab my other book so I can demonstrate what I mean. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, shall I, have you got pictures to show I've off? I've got loads go, of pictures. Uh, I've got absolutely Kim's loads of pictures. Show off, yeah. show off some pictures while I grab some crafts to demonstrate. Okay. Um, so these are more of Mary Lou. So Mary Lou made the amazing little foam craft um, ice cream fridge magnets. Um, and she sent some more uh, things in, including these adorable Yoshi eggs. Oh my God. Um, they oh, are so, are so cute. cute. Look at them. Look at them. They are absolutely adorable. Just, again, I want to eat them. Um, so they go, proficient with the crafts is this one. Uh, Lorcian um, is showing off their miniatures that they're painting, which is a whole witchcraft art themselves. I really like this. Um, I love the detailing. I love the shading and blending. Oh, wow. These. Like, that's really, really cool. So that's Lorcian. This is the book I made last year. It's a pretty hefty book. Uh, this is a beast of a book. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the book I made last year. <laughs> We're not going to make quite this book. We'll uh, give it our go, but this involved a lot of, uh, laser cutting and laser engraving and, um, yeah, quite a lot of work. Also kind of gets stiff. So, so, so this is my book and you can see like, these are each page is um has a binding so these were individual signatures this is the same paper i've been using today um and yeah this is i mean this is a hefty book and yeah it has got um it has got uh like depth inside the cover and that's partly to make it bulkier that's partly to make the spine work and that's partly because there's leds and lights and electronics in the back of the book that were connected to um, the other part of the um, installation. So when you turn the last page of the book, the installation lit up. So there's a lot going on in this book. So I needed space to hide electronics. But even just looking at the paper, that's a substantial chunk. And that is six pages. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is sort of an advantage to using paper of this weight and size like if you used card um because you will really get this kind of depth without needing to use a load of paper um what's also nice is that the handmade paper could i could i, could I however we're going to say Caddy, that Cardi, 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 Cardi. Cardi just sounds like a cardigan to me um i'll look it up um they they're deckled edge because they're naturally made so they they when they press the paper they put it in a, a deckled edge which means you get this kind of rough, rugged edge. So it looks really antique. It's not that smooth, crisp, machine chopped paper that you get for printing. Um, so I really like that looks wonderful in handmade books to me. Like I just love, uh, I love it. I really love it. But yeah, you could um, you could rough up the edges of your paper. You could burn the edge of your paper over a bath or a sink to be safe. Um, but yeah, and this, I don't know if you can I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to an angle where you can see uh, I'm going to have to attempt looking at this um so this is you can see just under the white there you'll be able to see a tiny bit of the binding creep almost if you angle it just a little bit more f yeah there you go a okay bit more and this, that way yeah that, yeah yeah okay so then, this is uh, now you've gone off the camera <laughs> There you go. Yeah. There, there, right there. Yeah, so this is a uh, French prop binding. Um, yeah. This is lovely for exposed binding because it looks really pretty and you can put ribbons under it and, and things and it looks lovely. We might do some of that next week. We might do a cop stitch and a kettle, kettle binding, a oh. uh, kettle stitch bind. Okay. So we'll have a play with some different binding styles as well. Okay. So, that's, I mean, we're not quite aiming for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a beast and was quite a, was a project and a half to make. Uh, yeah. But we're going to aim for something along these lines. So yeah. that can get you a bit excited about it. Yeah. So what do people need to do uh, for the 1st of July? So the next stream that we do is going to be the 1st of July, same time, 11 a.m. BST. Um, so the idea is you should be able to watch back from this, make your pages, and then, yeah. yeah, what what do people need to do if they want to do the next bit along with us? What okay. do they need to get? This one, I will make sure we've got a materials list up in time for next time. Um, but, uh, we're yeah, all your pages ready, folded, ready to go. So your stack of folded or taped folded pages. 
and they should be if you want to stain them they should already be stained so you need that stack um you will also need a needle and a thread um if you've got something thicker like an embroidery thread that's really great like thin thread can really slice through paper so something thicker or string string is really good um if you know what waxed cotton is wax cotton is wonderful mm. you can actually make your own wax yeah. by just rubbing cotton along a candle um but wax cotton doesn't cut into the um paper as much and it also doesn't tangle as you're trying to do bindings really really great um so when i have that ready i'm trying to think how much we'll get done next time uh yeah i guess if, you go carry on yeah definitely have that ready like we'll definitely do pages of binding please sort of start getting on to like the outsides of the book so have some cardboard ready um, so that we can start looking at like the outer books, but I'll make sure to post a materials list. Uh, yeah, you know, next week Wednesday at the latest, so that you've got a week to uh, get your Gather. materials in order. Um, but yeah, definitely your your paper stacks and your thread. Um, yeah, and a needle. Is yeah, essential. so keep an eye out on Twitter. We'll tweet it out um, in in time uh, for what you need to know. Uh, right, we're gonna go to the other screen now. Uh, there's this one here, um, except it's gonna it needs to say that one offline and we're gonna raid someone so stick around for a couple of minutes um and and we're gonna raid oh talkmatics uh gifted some subs thank you <laughs> talkmatics gifted a sub tonight y'all yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you <laughs> thank you very much. hold on we'll just pop back thanks thanks talkmatic okay we're back again yeah. okay now we're gone 